Hello and welcome to another video. This video will cover the two main philosophers in the Enlightenment period, Locke and Hobbes, and how their philosophical representations differ. As a lesson preview, this lesson will cover first, who and what Locke's ideas were, second, we'll talk about Hobbes, and third, we'll talk about the differences between Locke and Hobbes. So the first philosophical theory that we're going to dive into is Locke. First of all, John Locke was an Enlightenment philosopher from the 17th century. His ideas formed into two different things. The first one is also known as the social contract theory. The social contract theory states that government powers are derived from the people and in which the government serves its citizens, but it still guarantees people basic protection and security as well as other rights. Essentially, all of his ideas devolve down to how people are inherently good and how the government or a higher authority should help to protect people's inherently good rights. The second part that we're going to talk about is the idea of natural rights. Natural rights are basically saying that people are entitled to basic rights. John Locke says that the government should protect people's basic rights, and a lot of these rights devolve down to either liberty or property. Most of the time, the ideas around Locke talk about liberty, freedom, as well as other values as such as protecting your own right to property. The second philosophical theory that we're going to talk about is the idea around Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes was also an English philosopher from the 17th century, and his ideas also stem from his own philosophical idea of Hobbes. His ideas form into two different things. The first talks about the state of nature. The state of nature proves that everyone, including civilizations, are bound to fall into insecurity and anarchy without a leader. Essentially, what Hobbes is saying is that people are inherently evil, where if people don't have any authority or they don't have any leaders, they would fall into complete and utter madness. So Hobbes is saying that we should need a higher authority to always keep people in check. The second idea around philosophical ideas for Hobbes is also known as the sovereign. The sovereign is just a fancy word for a leader or even a monarchy. Now, this monarchy is unique in that it's a strong government that enforces certain acts. But the weird thing is, is that the sovereign is never entitled or actually bound to the own laws that the sovereign makes themselves. In other words, the sovereign is unbound by any law and they can do whatever they see fit to the benefit of their citizens. Although this argument could be made to be beneficial for these citizens, it could be problematic if the sovereign is evil or either corrupt and the sovereign can do whatever they want and the laws don't actually apply to them. And so this is the downsides of having a monarchy or the sovereign that is so powerful that you can't actually control it and it's not actually bound by law. So now we'll talk about a common thought experiment that compares the ideas of Hobbes and Locke. Imagine a group of boys are stranded on an island. In this scenario, Locke would said that even if a chief is elected, that chief should still give people basic rights such as representation, liberty, and equality. Essentially, even if the government exists, it should still work towards giving natural rights to their citizens. However, on the other hand, Hobbes would say that a complete monarchy would need to exist to keep everyone in check, or else anarchy will ensue. It's a very good representation on how different boys perceive how the government or a higher authority should act for their citizens. Some group of boys say that the leader should still give people basic rights and still give basic rights such as representation, liberty, and equality. However, another group of boys say that the chief should be the only one that holds people to how they should act, and that chief should be the only source of authority. And at the same time, that authority should not be entitled to any of the laws that they're actually making, essentially preserving a monarchy that isn't actually kept in check. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned a lot about the differences between the philosophical ideas between Locke and Hobbes.